Richard Southern joins us to chat about some of the day's more interesting stories. And this is one that's been uh, sort of gaining momentum on social media for the past couple of days. We've all gone a long time without a haircut, but some of us are faring a little better than others, Richard. Yeah, I mean, I've done the home haircut, Erica, like a lot Looking of people good. have done. Yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Getting better and better at it. Uh, but some people have foregone the haircut altogether, like our mayor, John Tory, who hasn't had a haircut since the barbers closed in last November. Look at that mop top, Erica. It's, yeah, it's looking full. It's looking, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's quite the look he's, he's sporting there. Like you can, you can, you mark the passage of time through the third wave by watching John Tory's right. hair every news conference. <laughs> uh, people online joking that he kind of looks like Beethoven or even Toronto's rebel mayor, William Lyon McKenzie. Yes. And even a popular YouTuber now, Erica, has weighed in pleading for us to get the vaccine so the mayor can get a haircut. For months, Mayor John Tory's hair has grown wild as it continued its journey to his shoulders. It has defied all odds and grown confusingly thicker. Somebody just needs to give that man a haircut. Do your part to help end the lockdown by getting vaccinated and wearing a mask when you need to. Let's cut John Tory's hair. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that made me laugh this morning. But, I watched it. Here's the question, though. Yeah. I mean, uh, the premier has uh, got a haircut, as he said his daughters did it. But obviously, Mayor Tory's kind of like in solidarity, I guess, I think with so. maybe the barbers. Right? Like, is that good to be in solidarity, or should the mayor just cut his own hair? You know, in solidarity with all of us who can't get a haircut, right? I mean, we can all relate to it a little bit. And you know what? It's. I, I think he takes it in stride, though. He's he's a he's a good sport about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another <laughs> rover has touched down on Mars, giving us more images of the red planet. This is actually a really big deal. China has landed on Mars, only the second country to do it. I mean, the U.S. is the only one that has landed rovers. The Russians have tried and failed, but here we're looking at a picture from China's rover on Mars. Those are the... You know, the slope there that the rover is going to go down onto the surface using it. So uh, the rover is currently on the lander. It's going to roll off soon. There's a color picture of the antenna pointing up. Uh, this is a big deal. I mean, it's not as high tech, this rover, as the two NASA ones that are roving around. But it certainly sends a clear signal that China's space capabilities are quickly catching up with those of the United States. By the way, Erica, this rover is going to look for signs of life. It's going to have a three-month mission at solar power. That's pretty neat, don't you think? Yeah, it's pretty cool. And you know what I learned from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the reason why the countries all seem to do it at the same time is because now is, I think, when Mars is closest. So it's a shorter yep. distance to get from Earth, which is pretty cool, too. Yep. Um, OK, you could call poutine one of our national foods, and some are trying to protect and grow that brand, Richard. Yeah, province of Quebec really wants to protect poutine and, you know, really brand it as its own. So a group representing Quebec's dairy industry says it's eyeing a special government designation for the term poutine. They say they're looking for what's called a, quote, reserved designation, which is an official recognition by the government of a cuisine that's authentic to a certain region. So just like, you know, pizza is Italian and sushi is Japanese, they want to drive home the fact that poutine is of uh, from uh, Quebec, although uh, critics say this could add some more bureaucracy to those doling out poutine. You like poutine? Of course you like poutine, right? I, I, I do like it. People are going to hate me for this. It's not one of my favorites, though. And I know it's a Canadian food. It's a Quebec uh, staple. But I don't know. Do you like it? Poutine? I love it, but I'm a purist. Like, people now like to put, like, lobster and all right. sorts of things in. Just keep it to the cheese curds and the gravy. That's what poutine is to me, yeah. you know? You know what? I can't wait for the return of Poutine Fest, you know, when they have all the trucks out here and they've got different kinds of poutine. Something to look forward to. Indeed. All right. uh, Richard, thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.